Welcome to the Fran Snyder Podcast, where I talk to artists and music fans to explore how music connects us through great stories and experiences. Brought to you by the Listening Room Network. Today's guest, Lip Bone Redding, the man, the myth, the legend. How are you? I'm great, man. I'm great. How are you? Good. It's good to see your smiling face, something I can always count on when I see you. You're always uh, a pos- positive presence every time I run into you. Thanks, man. I, I think I'm a silver linings guy. One of my my fans told me the other day. So I, I think I have that to live up to, but it, it's easy. Yeah. So you tour in a band called the, the Flying Machine. Is that right? The Beautiful Flying Machine. The Beautiful yeah. Flying Machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. Is, which has been grounded for a few months? <laughs> sort of. Yeah. You know, I, so I moved out to this uh, cool place in, um, well, let me back it up a little bit, I, if I may. So when, the, when this whole COVID thing hit, I was in, um, I was in Mexico at the uh, guitar festival down in Zihuatanejo. And a uh, pretty cool event, by the way. And then... Uh, I was supposed to travel around the Central America, South America for probably another six weeks. And then like United called me and said, hey, if you don't book a flight out, you're, you're not going to be able to get back for maybe months and months and months. So this was like, I get like a, a less than a week lead time. So I scrambled and, you know, used my mileage points and all this stuff for, you know, and, and was able to switch my flight and I got back and so I had parked the beautiful flying machine in Florida, which is one of my little stops. And so I ended up down in Florida, not too far from you at the Tampa airport there yeah. and was able to quarantine uh, for a couple of weeks there. And then I, I, during that time, I called some friends up in Eastern North Carolina because I had been doing some workshops here. It's uh, St. Anne's retreat uh, and it's in Tarboro. It's about 26 acres. There's an old church building from the 1800s on the property we do concerts here what we did uh beautiful outdoor lawn setting and all this kind of stuff so i I called up kevin and trish and said hey what do you think about if i come and hang out there and make like a a garden and do my live streaming and stuff from here so they said sure to make a long story a little bit shorter i ended up coming to this place uh and nicknamed it the art farm saint anne's retreat and art farm and i've lived for a while in my beautiful flying machine. And then I, I kind of procured this small tiny house and turned it into more of kind of a music studio art space. So I kind of lopped over and spread out for a little bit. And that's where I've been for the past seven or so months. Nice. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Looks like both you and I are in tight quarters. If, if the, my recording (laughs) environment happens to look like a bathroom, uh, it's purely an illusion. Pay no attention to the. Band. It's a beautiful backdrop. Let me tell you, I have that same shower curtain, by the way. Pay <laughs> no attention to the man in front of the curtain. <laughs> yeah, there's a construction crew outside my apartment today, and they've just decided to uh, just let it all fly. Yeah. So I they, they knew we were going to have this conversation. They, this they is, always know. Yeah. So, uh, but hey, you got to be versatile, which is uh, really what I think of you. I think that is the, the central theme, international, versatile, lip bone ready. Um, let's backtrack just a little further. Like, where are you from? Uh, t- tell us the parts that you don't intend to keep as a mystery. And then uh, oh. then we'll go into your, uh, into your, your, your journey. Well, I'm originally from around this area. Uh, the next county over, this is Edgecombe County. I'm from Pitt County, North Carolina. Uh, a little town called Greenville. Uh, it's a college town. It, uh, it's just one of those kind of, um, it's, it feels like a giant organized liminal space. You know, they're, they're very transient. There's a college town. People come through. The businesses never last that long. Things just kind of shift and change. So this was my my spawning grounds, if you will. And I've like a salmon, I keep coming back upstream whenever there's any kind of crisis in my life or anything, because uh, it's inexpensive here. Uh, It's got good services. And like, I know the guy that can fix my van and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's, that's where I'm from. Okay. Then, yeah. Had to get out of here though. Yeah. 
Okay, but you know, in, in terms of uh, nomadic life, you were like one of the poster boys. Uh, you and maybe <laughs> Randall Williams, and just a handful of other people that I can think of. I mean, a lot of musicians travel widely, but uh, but you yeah. travel sort of incessantly. And I, yeah. I'm, I'm curious. It's probably a, a positive feedback loop, but where do you you know, in terms of the chicken and the egg, does the versatility come about i guess we will we'll jump into that subject more, more deeply but the, do you feel like do you feel like like you have a vagabond spirit that oh yeah forces oh, you yeah. to be versatile or are you versatile and therefore like hey let's travel the world with this well i yeah, that's a good question and it's interesting sort of dilemma uh it's i really think that initially it started out from uh, perhaps uh, a combination of dissatisfaction and self-preservation and because when I first left here I, I moved to New York City and I, I don't know why I did that I just I really don't know why I did it I just had to do it and I had to get out of here because it's a small town and I it was so easy to just get in trouble and do all the things and then I had to go to New York and then for some reason was the biggest, meanest, baddest place I could possibly think of, but with the most opportunities for whatever mm -hmm. it was that I thought that I wanted to do at that time. And I was always creative and, and that kind of evolved. I think that made me a, a, a vagabond more than anything, because I think I moved every year or so. And it just, the, the loop just got tighter and tighter and tighter until I was like, well, if I keep moving all the time, Maybe I don't even need a place to, to live that's like in one spot. So eventually I started touring around with the trio and then I saw these amazing places. Like, I want to come back to this place. And then I kind of ended up, you know, buying this beautiful flying machine. And now it just, if I stay too long, it kind of feels weird. So it, it's like I said, I think it's just a, a combination of this uh, self-preservation and, and dissatisfaction, but I've kind of harmonized it in a way to where it's, if that makes any sense at all, it's, it, yeah. there's a harmony to it. Yeah. Yes. So you do about 200 dates a year, uh, you know, before, yeah. before, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. these, these end times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious, like, uh, out of those 200 dates, like per year, how many countries do you typically visit per year, if you had to guess? Oh, per year, like four or five, if you include Mexico and, um, you know, like Canada and stuff. Yeah. But like, I've, I've started to make, I become more of like a, a migrant nomad person, you know, where I, I'll go for one location like even in the u.s i'll go from like florida north carolina in in the like florida in the winter north carolina in the uh, whatever the between times yeah. and then in this in, in in the spring summer i used to go up to like upstate new york canada crossover in the summer i try to be in colorado the west coast where they, it's all about the weather man so you've created a pretty pretty solid structure of like yeah, Rupert Waits is the same way. He's got a house in in New York and and a, a place in Colorado, and he sublets mm -hmm. one when, he, when he's at the other. And New York yeah. lets him lets him do the East Coast, and Colorado lets him do everything else. Um, yeah, it, but you have like some regular stops, especially in Mexico, Central America. Uh, uh -huh. are, are those structurally set as well? Like, do you tend to be in Mexico during certain parts of the year? Uh, usually in the spring, I'll go down to Mexico, but I, I, lately I've been going in the fall to like Spain, for example. Um, I used to go in the late fall to, uh, Denmark, you know, and I, and as I said, used to, it's like last year or the year before last. Right. And then Scandinavia and, but every year is different. I just don't know what kind of opportunities are going to happen. Like, um, I kind of just go, well, where do I want to be when? And, and it, it's largely dependent on the weather. I mean, it, it, it's the limitation of living like this. So you want to go where uh, it's going to be gentle and you don't have to like, you know, sweat and suffocate in your vehicle. I mean, it's a yeah. big, big part of it. Yeah.
So, uh, so the flying machine is your U.S. vehicle, or does or yeah. does it go to Canada as well? I've, or? Yeah, I've taken it up to Canada, uh, up quite a few times. And so, when yeah. you go to Mexico, you're you're Ubering and 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 doing whatever you have to do. Or so, I just I started doing this thing a few years ago. I call it backpacking a guitar. So, whenever I go to like Mexico, Central America, South America, anywhere in Europe, I'll just take a, a I'll take a backpack and I got a Cordoba sent me this tiny little guitar this year. So I was trying that out. And so I've been, you know, just kind of going around and uh, as light as possible, ultra light. Yeah. A few changes of clothes. Like I don't carry CDs with me anymore. I, I started making these little books that I have um, and it, with download codes and stuff in them, but they're books. So I write these little tiny books. They're like 20 or 30 pages long. Yeah. And they're, they're, they weigh very little. And I just stick up, you know, a big stack in the bottom of the bag and a couple of changes of clothes and a sports coat. Cause that'll get you in places where you can, <laughs> I can wear these overalls, man, and throw a sports coat on and get in anywhere, you know, That's and awesome. uh, you know, some invisible shoes or whatever. And anything you need, you just buy along the way. And it's so much fun. And you save a lot of money when you don't carry a bunch of stuff too. So I, I call that my backpack and a guitar tours. And that's, probably one of my favorite things to do because traveling light you see so much of the world so easily and make a lot of friends yeah so let's talk about the versatility uh mm -hmm. in order in order to fund um your travels uh, yeah you have a show that's probably one of the most adaptable i've ever seen it seems like you know at the drop of a dime you could you can entertain a senior community and and in, in the afternoon and then go play a biker bar that night uh, and, then oh, yeah. a, and then a theater show the next day. Oh yeah. Uh, it talked to me again, you know, chicken and egg is, is that, um, is that driven by just curiosity and just always just wanting to grow as an artist or is there like, Hey, I've got this really cool lifestyle. And if I want to keep this up, I need to be able to work anywhere, anyhow. Cause you know, you, you, you're in, in places where you have to know a different language as well. A lot of times. <laughs> That's a good question too. I, I, I'm sure there's a little bit of this, oh, I've got to be able to play anywhere, but more and more it's, it's not that. And more and more it's, uh, I, realize, I really love people and I love stories and I love people's stories. And so I don't, I'm one of those people who doesn't really differentiate against people in general because of like a lifestyle choice. So if, if there's a, or, you know, an old person and a kid, they're the same thing, really. They're just, one has more experience than the other. And it's at the, at the other end of the, at the, you know, the other end of the, the spectrum or the, the show than yeah. the other one, you know? And, and they're, so, both, they're both at that stage of life where they'll pick their nose in public too. <laughs> yeah, and laugh at anything or, you know, they, they just, you know, they don't, you know, they don't give a crap about anything, really, yeah. you know, like about what other people think. It's all the same. People are the same. And I'm really about the connectivity and, and I know that sounds so cliche. Hey man, I'm about the, you know, yeah. about bringing everybody together. But really I, I see the good in people. I, as I said, I'm a silver linings kind of person. And I always play to that. Every now and then you get some jerk or whatever. I can handle that. I spent too many years in the bars in New York City. <laughs> with, to not be able to handle some heckler or something. But all in all, I do it because I love people. Yeah, that's awesome. If you are enjoying this podcast, can you pause for a moment to like, review, and subscribe? Please help the world discover our music community and the wonderful artists we support. Your feedback makes a difference. So let's talk about a little bit of you've got also have this yoga side uh, oh, yeah. that, you, that you've blended with the music. Tell me about, uh, again, how that evolved and, and uh, some of the various things that you're doing, uh, both, you know, recording and live um, for that, you know, mashup, so to speak. I think back in the early 2000s, I decided I was going to move to, um, I was going to move to San Francisco and, and, it was, I discovered it was really hard to sort of play gigs like I did in New York city. And so I ended up playing for yoga classes in the morning and I, I had no idea, but a friend of mine said, Hey, will you come play for my class? I said, sure. So I just started playing for these yoga classes and 
I thought it was just supposed to be all floaty and light and everything, which a lot of it is. But some of these classes, like an Ashtanga yoga class, they want something that pumps a little bit and something that kind of goes with a steady beat. And that's kind of my thing. I, if you know my music, it's, it's all about groove and it's not necessarily a harsh groove. It's just a steady groove. It can be slow or fast. And then I improvise a lot over the top of that. So no, vocally mostly. And it also, just also a, with your trombone, your, your yeah, yeah, yeah. All this, <laughs> all the, all the weird emanating sounds that come out of my face. Yeah. And, and <laughs> other parts, <laughs> but that was like, it, it was a good fit. And I don't know, as the years went by, I kind of was in the back of my mind. And then I was actually here at St. Anne's uh, retreat and they were having like a yoga retreat and a friend of mine was teaching a class and said, do you want to play with my, yoga class so I was like huh no one's asked me to do that in like 10 years this was about th three or four years ago and so I did and the people here said hey we like the yoga class but do you want to just come back and play the music and we'll all come and listen to it and I said sure no problem and um it just turned into a workshop and the workshop was pretty going pretty good I was playing for uh, it's like a breathing pranayama workshop um and then when the COVID hit I there no more work you know breathing in a room full of people is not really proper <laughs> all, of a sudden, all of a sudden this, all of a sudden it's dangerous this most healthy everyone's thing holding their, yeah, everyone's holding their breath I'm just, and uh, so i decided to do it on a live stream and so it's turned into this whole other thing i call it i call it the breathe in and i say you know kind of direct everybody to just relax for an hour and it's kind of like a cosmic trip uh people say that they lie on the floor with a pillow and just close their eyes and then i i play and i just kind of take them on a little guided meditation and, it's and this, is, this is this is on a live stream or yeah every sunday yeah. at four it's called mm -hmm. breathe in if you go to my facebook page if you go to lipbone.com you'll see it, uh, a, a link for it there all right and, and i saw from your schedule that it looks like you have uh several weekly shows that you do three yeah three, three. yeah so what are the other yeah. two friday night is the Friday night flight, the love stream. Oh, right. So that's, so that's sort of, uh, it's more like the singer songwriter kind of stuff that I do. Uh, Cause I write songs all the time. And they're not always jumpy and happy. Some of them are a little more introspective or philosophical or what have you, blah, blah. And, uh, but I, I, I play those and I read poetry. Cause I write <laughs> poetry too. Nice. And it's sort of my, uh, as I've been sitting here in the mornings at this beautiful place that I'm staying, I've been keeping a journal and writing uh, poems about my experience or just writing thoughts and also drawing. So uh, and, uh, I use watercolors and watercolor pencils to make, you know, just kind of document my, my life as I'm going. And it doesn't have to be literal or make sense. I just kind of, anyway, yeah. so that, that comes across a Friday night, the love stream. All right. on Friday night and, and then, then Saturday then... night is shelter jam and that's sort of a, a dance party uh, I have a lot of people on there who because I play a lot of swing dance shows especially places like uh, out west and the west coast swing stuff like Santa Fe uh, there's a big group of swing dancers who get me to come there every year and I just play all my swing dance songs and they it's got it's like a couple hundred of them spinning each other around the odd fellows hall in Santa Fe that's awesome. And how, so is that a, is that like two 45 minute sets? Like what, what is a swing? Show? No, it's an hour. I just do an hour and I always run over a little bit unless, yeah. you know, I had something that upset my stomach for <laughs> dinner or something. I got it. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks so much for being, I gotta go. All right. All right. And uh, I just got a bubble machine. I'm really excited about my bubble machine. So oh, you're a trip. Yeah. My Don't bubble machine is, is the bomb, dude. Wait, wait till I come back out on the road. You're going to wait till I scent the bubbles. And then you're going to have a total sensory experience. At the I, love it. Show. I love it. I have, a, I have a friend who started a company called Scent Phil. And uh, I wonder if, I, if you guys could team up. He has like these bio friendly uh, scents that you put into like your renews it's and all these kinds of things. Uh huh. Uh huh. He, he bought the patent for this glass jar that fits all the other oh, brands. So you can right. get your renews it. I forget what the other glade, uh, you can get those <laughs> things. 
and then by his <laughs> but then by his sense and then you know maybe maybe you could sponsor your tour give you some scented bubbles. yeah <laughs> yeah hey man you got that scent you know the one that smells like a old lady's house that has a lot of dogs you got that scent we can put that one in no I'm just... <laughs> sorry we just we just have patchouli sorry yeah I, well i like that you know <laughs> so tell me about because you also did a podcast so are you still doing that a little bit yeah or? it it you know the live streams kind of took over my time because it's so much work to do the live streams because what i do uh maybe your listeners will be interested in this too as a way to raise money you know and to keep the money kind of uh happening it's like so lip on fans make a donation and uh i send them an mp3 if they make a certain amount i'll send them an mp3 of the weekly live stream so they have a uh, something to listen to okay for their for their own thing so anyway i spend a lot of time uh, downloading the music and mixing it a little bit and then re-uploading and then distributing to all the the lip on fans every week that uh have made donations and so it it took it ate up the podcast is what it did so i suddenly i have almost no more time Mm -hmm. uh if 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 i want to go outside or do anything outside at all or go to the grocery store or anything like that so yeah I, i i it's like i I paired it back to once a month and now I I'm due to put one out. I just, it's, it's, it's time. Cool. Cool. So you've been sharing your story and your life for quite some time, both yeah. on stage and online. So I'm going to challenge you. Tell me okay. something that you've not said in public about oh. lip bone. Oh, wow. Well, well, let's see. Uh, I saw a UFO once <laughs> when I was a kid, and it was a well-documented experience. Not mine, but I, I read the experience later on, and it was, I'll tell you, it was this big triangular thing that I live right next door to the university, uh, East Carolina University. And on the, in the summer and on the weekends, it was pretty much dead. And this big triangle thing with lights around it, uh, and it didn't make any noise, flew over and just hovered. It was huge. It was really big. And then it's, and all the kids in the neighborhood saw it. And we were like, oh my God, what is that? And then boom, took off. And we were like, did we just see that? And then these fighter jets came and chased it. Really? Yeah. So I I don't. I don't and think was, I've ever told anybody that before. And it was a triangle. It wasn't a circle. We, well, we no, always, it was a big triangle. It was a big floaty triangle. It was big. <laughs> it was probably, you know, 100 feet across or something. I don't know. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. It awesome. like some kind of uh, weird, maybe it was military or something. I don't know. It was very strange, but it was definitely not a, an airplane or anything, a helicopter or anything like that. We're, right. So all right, I'm going to ask you one more question. I don't know if if this is something that it must come up a lot with your fans. The origin of your name yeah. is that something? You're... Oh yeah, no, that's it's it's a uh, lip trombone. It's you know it. Well, okay. When I was playing in the subway in New York, it was kind of like uh, uh, I had a really long name. It was like the amazing euphonious lip bonic <laughs> trombonicus something. Okay. And then somebody like, oh, that's too long. I was like, eh. I cut a few words. I said, I said, okay, lip bone, boom. Okay. And that's, that's how it kind of started. Nice. Can you give us I a was, taste? Uh, can you give us a taste of the lip <laughs> trombone for, uh, for, for the listeners? Out there? Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I yeah. wish there were more bubbles. Then it would be more inspiration. Yeah. Well, uh, to our audience, if you get a chance to see Lip Bone Live, it's always a treat. Super talented, uh, super versatile. Again, the foot and and the and the mouth instruments will provide a, a groove and, and rhythm that you can just feel good for. And I have put my foot in my mouth a few times. I have to tell you that. <laughs> You're right about that, Fran. <laughs> awesome. Great, great to reconnect with you. Uh, can't wait to see you next time you you, you land in in uh, St. Pete or the Tampa Bay area. Well, hopefully I'll be down there in um uh, in the winter because you know we've got a place. To, I got one of my parking spots down there, so 
I'm going to try to get down there. Is that Carrie's like... place? Is that Carrie's place? No, no, oh. no. I, I'm, I, me and a bunch of friends got some property down there for parking our vans and stuff. And nice. It's, it's, it's about an hour and a half or two hours away from St. Pete. So we just kind of go out there and, you know, have a little, I don't know what's happening this year. This is the strangest year on record, but yeah. 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 So, All yeah. Right. But yeah, so, come check out the live stream, uh, you know, until then. Super. I'll email you for, uh, for links to put up besides your website. It'll be in the show notes and uh, this will come out on YouTube first. Then maybe a week later, it'll be on the, on all the podcast apps. So be well. Oh, and uh, I look you, forward you too, to seeing brother. you probably in 2021. Yeah. Thank you for everything you do, man. We, right. we really appreciate you. Thanks. Lebon. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, man. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Fran Snyder podcast. Please subscribe, like, or share to help your friends discover this community. Also, I'd love to hear from you with any feedback or suggestions you have. And if you'd like to learn more about house concerts and listening rooms around the world, please visit and join listeningroomnetwork.com. You can email me from there. See you next time on the Fran Snyder Podcast.